Welcome back to another edition of Shepherd Speaks. I'm Brigadier General Kenyon Bell, Commander of the 82nd Training Wing at Shepherd Air Force Base, and I'm here with our Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Dina Mosley. Today we have the opportunity to be out in Vandenberg, in sunny California, visiting with the 381st Training Group. And so with us today is the Commander of the 381st Training Group, Colonel David Rickards, yes, sir. and his Group Superintendent, Chief Master Sergeant Lance Power. And so it's a pretty significant opportunity for us to come out and talk about what's taking place here at Vandenberg, specific to the 381st Training Group. Absolutely, sir. And you know, Vandenberg has a special place in my heart because I spent two years here as the Command Chief before taking on the same role there at Shepherd Air Force Base at the 82nd Training Wing. So I'm super excited to be able to share this moment and be back here at Shepherd Air Force Base to welcome our mission partners back to the 82nd Training Wing. Our missile maintainers are back under the umbrella of Shepherd Air Force Base. This is pretty special. You know, when we think back um, a little bit about the link between the 381st Training Group and Shepherd Air Force Base, uh, we can very easily see that missile maintenance training used to be done at Shepherd Air Force Base, back when it was the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Maintenance Training along, the, along with the Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile Training. And so that was back in the 50s, almost all the way to the 80s. And then after it left Shepard, it transferred out here to Vandenberg. Indeed, sir. So there's a lot for us to be able to unpack. Um, Colonel Rickers, I think probably one of the first things that everyone is interested in knowing and understanding is what is this mission out here that the 3D First Training Group does? Well, yes, sir. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're charged with producing world-class nuclear warfighters on the operation side. So that's 13 ends and on the maintenance side as well. So that's two MOs and 21 mics. And not just for big missiles like uh, the Man Man 3 I ICBM, but for smaller ones like you see arrayed behind us here, the air-launched cruise missile maintenance for that as well. So it covers both officer and enlisted and enlisted, yes, sir. across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chief, what makes this kind of special in your eyes, this, uh, the, the mission that goes on here, the criticality of, of this mission? It's one of the Air Force's, in, in our opinion, just one of the most important missions that our airmen get to do every single day. Uh, when Colonel Rickards and I get a chance to meet them every week uh, on the enlisted side that arrive from basic training, it's just exciting to see that passion, that desire in their eyes and uh, to I always ask this question to them. When's the last time the United States has ever used a nuclear weapon? And more often than not, they go back in history, they account to World War II and, and, and other, other periods that they think is the correct answer. But the response, sir, is every single day. Mm -hmm. Every single day in deterrence, every single day in the training that the airmen and the 381st and the 532nd training squadron accomplish. Yeah, and you know that, I think that, that linkage that you just talked about, the 532nd and the 381st, it brings us really to why are we even here? You know, there's been a transition that has taken place that brings the 381st to the 82nd training wing. That's right. What, what is this, uh, what's this big change that just happened? Right. Well, yes, sir, about um, four months ago, General Tullis started the process of moving the 381st out from a direct report to her under your watch care out there at the 82nd training wing because she knew that the Space Force was about to take the 533rd Training Squadron, which we haven't met, uh, mentioned yet. They're the space operations outfit here at Vandenberg. So the Space Force is gonna take the 533rd and bring them under their umbrella in the Space Force. And then at that point, we would become a group that, that just uh, was too small to continue as the way we had in the past. So, so we started the process of uh, being transferred to you, which happened on the, the uh, 7th of July. Right. Uh, and since then, it's been, uh, it's been a good relationship. Right. And so, you know, when we think about some of the, um, the kind of the business end of, of what, took, what takes place out here at Vandenberg. Mm -hmm. Chief, I know you were, you were sharing as we were traveling out what you remember from your time here, some of these launches that take place. I do. I was always like a kid in a candy store whenever we had a launch here or even coming over to the 381st to watch how they train, watch the enthusiasm and not only the enlisted, but in the officer corps as well as they learn the new way of getting after uh, the mission here at the 381st. So um, every launch, every time I remember running out of my house one time because they were getting ready uh, to do a, a launch and I, I thought it was going to be late for it. So um, those are always exciting 
exciting times here. And so I know that the students here um, are excited about it as well. Right. What's some of the new things that are coming down the, the pipe? I know that you have a lot of innovation that's going on here at the 381st. What type of activities are, are you proud of that the, uh, the team has been digging into? Well, yes, sir. I think, uh, I think probably, you know, the more, one of the more innovative practices that we've been leaning into lately has to do with, with trying to cut down the amount of time that people spend awaiting training due to some things that oftentimes are beyond their control, like security clearances or PRP uh, screenings or perhaps uh, physicals to become, um, uh, you know, full up round on missile alert duty. So we, we contact people sometimes well, uh, you know, into their, uh, or I should say well before they ever arrive to Vandenberg to, to work on those kind of things in advance so they don't have to spend time waiting for class here, waiting to go do the mission that they're trained to do, but actually hitting the ground running and starting school. Yeah, that's a, that's, that is a good thing. Uh, we, at Shepherd Proper, some of those same um, issues are going on. Uh, things that we're trying to, to get after, I would call them uh, the challenges of making sure that people get into the pipeline as quick as we can, That's right. and then out the other end on to operational locations. Um, I'd imagine, uh, Chief Powers, that the, the class time frame, the amount of time that people are in your different courses here runs the gamut. Uh, I know some of your courses have people who actually PCS in due to, what are some of the ranges of the, the length of time for these classes? Yes, sir. All of our students, they typically come here for at least four months to six months or even a year, depending on the time of the year, for our officer students. So our officer students actually PCS here. Uh, it's, it's roughly about a six-month course, but depending on the time of the year that they arrive, uh, getting them into that pipeline as soon as possible is critical. Uh, but until then, we, we do integrate them into the early studies to give them a head start. Uh, so they PCS here and then are enlisted. Uh, come into three courses for missile maintainers. Mm. One focuses on the facilities for the ICBM. Uh, the other focuses on the, uh, the maintenance side of the actual missile. And then the third is the electronic features of the missile. And that's just the ICBM. We also have the air launch cruise missile course for our enlisted members as well. Um, and then the graduates typically go to the northern tier bases, F.E. Warren, Malmstrom, or Minot unless they're the air launch cruise missile graduates who can go to places like Barksdale or maybe Whiteman. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, the, uh, that's, a, that's a great linkage, uh, Chief Power. The, the fact that the majority of your graduates are going to go to one of those three bases in the northern tier. Um, and very soon we'll have an opportunity to go and visit we those are. bases. We are. We're excited um, about that. Yeah, very shortly. And that's the other connection that just makes this such a, such a meaningful and easy transition for having the 532nd and the 381st training group come underneath the 82nd training room. That's right. Um, it's not just what you do within the 532nd, it's the linkage to what's already being done in the 82nd training group, mm -hmm. and then in the 982nd training group, which is the group that has the majority of our geographically separated units, that's where the field training detachments are, mm -hmm. um, that are doing that continual training, that follow-on training, at some of the, the northern tier bases. Right. Yeah. Like you were asking about a moment ago, sir, uh, the 381st under your wing now, but really it's just a temporary thing until such time as the group inactivates, again, because we are so small. And the 532nd will move under the 82nd training group and really will be restored to, uh, to all that history and continuity that, that the wing already brings. Right. So, you know, I got to be just as transparent as possible. That's there's so much goodness in this uh, transition. That's the one piece that we're not looking forward to. Mm. Because as the group stands down, that means that we lose the both of you in that key leadership role. Because the group does dismant, uh, um, the group does stand down. And then now the group commander and the group uh, superintendent both go on to other things in our United States Air Force. Um, but we still get to keep the 532nd, so all the the nuts and bolts, uh, the thing that we do as far as the mission standpoint, but, but uh, we'll wait until that comes, when that comes to pass, and we'll, we'll take care of that. Sure. So we're, we're talking about the types of training mm -hmm. that goes on here. Colonel Rickards, there's a lot. I mean, there are different shred outs. Mm -hmm. I've read the brochure. I've gone down through the mission brief. Can you just break it down for me? What types of training goes on here? Who comes through 
Vandenberg Air Force Base here in the 381st Training Group and goes out into the operational force. Yes, sir. Well, it's the gateway for nuclear operations. It's the gateway for nuclear maintenance as well. And it's unique, not just the air launch cruise missiles that you see behind you and the ICBMs that you see on static display. Uh, it's unique in the Air Force in the sense that maintenance is just as important as operations for us as we have to be able to execute uh, an order from the president to expend a nuclear weapon if we need to. And so just like to use a, an aircraft term, just getting that plane out on the ramp shows that we're capable. In us, in our terms, it's getting that missile on alert and ready to go if the president asks us to. It's getting this air launch cruise missile ready to go if the president needs us to. So it's maintenance and ops that are joined together in that sort of operation. You know, we see what happens on the operational end. Something goes up mm -hmm. and then we see the big fireball go up and, and a missile comes out of the ground. Right. What types of effort does it take in terms of hours of work and behind the scenes in order to be able to make that happen? To make a test launch happen, sir? That's correct. Oh my goodness. Well, it all starts with identifying a missile that is on alert and operational on the northern tier, so one of those three bases. Identifying it, it's not just cherry-picked, it's, it's, uh, it comes up almost through a lottery system uh, so that it can represent the field that's trucked down here and uh, it's, it's uh, lowered into one of our launch facilities out here that is ready for testing or made ready for testing. Uh, and the only thing different about it is a little bit of a, uh, a wafer to help um, track it as it goes and certainly not nuclear weapons on top but a payload that is very similar, a test body mm -hmm. And we launch it downrange uh, very accurately, uh, and it came from the northern tier. You know, and different people have strong feelings about those bases. Uh, most times they have the strongest feelings when they get the assignment. But you take a Minot, I haven't met anyone yet who has negative things to say after they've left that assignment because of the, the culture, the climate. Um, well, maybe not the climate, the, the cold portion. I'm talking about the culture of the, uh, the camaraderie that goes on at the Northern Tier bases. They, they, they work very closely together and they have a strong sense of mission. Yes, sir. And what's so great about the campus here is all of our instructors, they're the elite missile operators or missile maintainers that we recruit from the field. We bring them in as subject matter experts, but they also serve as mentors to the students all throughout their curriculum. And when they, when they do find out they're going to Minot, maybe contrary to popular belief, they're pretty excited about it. Yeah, they're, pretty, they're pretty stoked because their, their mentor that they've looked up to for so long now went there, they loved it, and they didn't want to leave. But thankfully, we got them here to train them. Right. <laughs> you know, Chief, the other thing is it, when, when we have geographically separated units, they are so tied in to the base where they're located. That's right. And so here at Vandenberg, we really want to thank the installation commander and command chief uh, Colonel Mastelier and Chief Hogan for taking care of our team here. Um, everything that we're hearing about today just can't be done without the support of an installation team. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, so we really, really, really appreciate uh, you taking care of our team out here. Thank you very much. And as we make this transition, we'll hear more about the wonderful things that are taking place out here at Vandenberg with all of the, the teammates out here that are, that are performing their mission with the 532nd training group and the 381st training support squadron. So we're happy to have you. Uh, glad to have the team on board and thanks for letting us come out and spend some time with you. Yes, sir. Join us again for another edition of Shepherd Speaks coming to you real soon.